Hi, Kat. Welcome to the conservation lab. Thanks, what are you working on? Well, I thought I'd show you around because I have a little project that I'm working on, which I'd be happy to show you, but I know you haven't been to the conservation lab before, so I thought I'd show you what kinds of equipment you might find in here. Perfect. So the first thing I want to show you is the fume exhaust trunk, and basically it sucks in air and goes all the way up to the roof. It has its own circulation system. So if I'm working with something that has um, like a solvent that has a strong odor, it will pull that out. This is a large stainless steel sink that we can use for bathing um, oversized works on paper, but also textiles if we need to. And um, we have a source of deionized water, which is really helpful because Arizona has very hard water with a lot of minerals in it. And so the deionizing process allows us to take out these metals. And then we have normal tap water, because sometimes we can use normal tap water. We have a stereo microscope, which I use a lot when I'm looking at drawing media and certain printmaking techniques, which are harder to figure out when you're looking at it with just visually. Even when you're looking at it with the Optivisor, which is also a very um, stylish. stylish and helpful tool for conservators. Like, I have to have something right here in order to see. <laughs> But when this is not sufficient, then I can get to the stereo microscope. This is a print. This is a dry point, an intaglio print, a form of engraving that's called dry point. And it's a view of Paradise Valley, which is just north of Phoenix, and um, has a lot of local desert fauna. We're considering bathing it to try and reduce the map burn stains, but in order to do so, I needed to figure out if there's adhesive um, in the paper. And one of the ways that you can do it is using an ultraviolet light. Okay, I'm gonna turn the lights off for a second so you can see that these adhesive here in the corners fluoresces, and it's just a way for me to see if there's any um, material on the surface or in the paper that is um, not really visible to the naked eye. And that just helps me see that there must have been um, some sort of tape on here at one time. Over here we have a variety of different materials used in what we call the technical term is surface cleaning and for works on paper. We have um, different forms of white vinyl erasers. So these are blocks. These are carved blocks. This is a crapoline eraser. These are Mars Stadler erasers. These are a little harder than the magic rub, so they behave differently. These, this is magic rub erasers that have been um, ground into crumbs. It also can be very useful and you can actually buy them already ground by the pound. These are pastels, watercolors, and loose pigments that I use in different types of retouching for works on paper. And since I'm a paper conservator, all of these tools are used in that context. I wouldn't work on a painting or um, an object typically. These are cotton swabs that can be useful for lots of different purposes. We have here um, what we call a tacking iron, which just is a very small iron um, used in paper conservation sometimes. We have brushes, scalpels, micro spatulas, bone folders. Two materials that are used really regularly in paper conservation are methyl cellulose and wheat starch paste. And methyl cellulose is like a powder but when you mix it with water, it becomes a gel. Wheat starch paste is probably the most widely used adhesive in paper conservation. Most often we buy it and we cook it. You can mix it with water and cook it and then strain it. And this is what it looks like after it's been cooked, which is really delightful, I know. But then when we're ready to use it, we strain it with water and it looks more like skim milk. 
and when it dries, it forms a very strong adhesive that is reversible with water, which is, um, reversibility is a really important tenet of our code of ethics. One of the ways that we can monitor how effective um, the water can be, the wash water can be, is using a pH meter or a conductivity meter. These are different ways of measuring pH of water solutions. This is Japanese paper in different forms. Japanese paper is incredibly strong and has very long fibers. It's transparent and lightweight, this particular sheet is, um, but you can see how long the fibers are. Um, this is a torn edge, it, so it makes for very strong mends, like if I'm mending a tear in a piece of paper or I'm applying a hinge. This is Japanese paper that's actually already the mold, when the mold, when it was made on the mold, it, um, formed into strips, which is really helpful for mending tears. These kinds of strips are already made for us. This is one of the handiest tools. I use tape measure all the time. And I try to use these fabric ones because the metal ones are sharp and not a great combination with paper. Also, I wanted to show you all these materials. A lot of the materials we use in housing works of art on paper and storing them are kept in rolls. So we have everything from Tyvek to Mylar clear polyester film to spun polyester to unbuffered papers to buffered papers to this material called Marvel Seal. We have different kinds of cotton twill tapes. We have Tyvek tape. We have parafilm. We have Teflon wrap. We just have a lot of materials that are used for different purposes. Um, this is a light sheet and it allows us to basically look through um, paper, assuming that it's um, thin enough, but there are times when we really need uh, um, transmitted light in order to better make fills, like these are losses along the edge that will be mended and filled. And using the transparent light helps us make a more seamless fill. Um, and that's about it, unless you have any questions. We good? All right. See you later.